Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my two week weight symptoms by DPO, pregnant versus not pregnant. <laughs> so these are all the symptoms I experienced. I will specify what day past ovulation, that's what DPO means they were, um, during that two week wait, which is so, such a, a time filled with like anticipation, frustration, anxiety, joy, it's like, such a crazy wild time and i know that during the past few two week waits i've had for all my kids i've binge watched these videos because i found them really really helpful so in case you're brand new my name is erica i have an almost five-year-old son a two-year-old son and i'm currently 16 weeks pregnant with our first baby girl so if i'm like completely out of breath that's why but i wrote down my symptoms there was a month where i was convinced convinced that we had conceived that that was our month um, and I ended up not being pregnant and then I recorded um, my symptoms during the two-week wait for the month that we did end up conceiving and I just think it's really interesting to compare them um, especially because during the two-week wait when I was not pregnant I really really felt like I was and the month that we did conceive I I wasn't quite as sure so I think it'll be interesting to go through okay so friends let's start with and I'm also like sitting on a little stool so <laughs> trying to give my bump as much much space as possible let's start with the month that I was not pregnant one DPO I wrote painful twinges on the right side but feels more urinary than anything else two DPO during the night cramps bloating during the evening 3 DPO, middle of the night, stuffy nose, woke up with a stuffy nose. So this was back in, I want to say it was October, it was September, October. And so I was like, oh, like it's a little early to be getting a stuffy nose. Like it's not, it doesn't feel like a cold. And I know that congestion can sometimes be a symptom of pregnancy. So like maybe that's it. 4 DPO, I wrote allergy like symptoms, not as congested, but blowing my nose a lot, tired, uterus feels tender. I wrote, could be making it all up. Anxious and sad and snippy, but I didn't have a good night's sleep last night. Twinge in my uterus, walking back to the kitchen. And I said, ow, that was at 4.36 p.m. And I wrote, oh, I had wrote, I had just been praying. So I had just been praying, saying like, please God, let me be pregnant, give me a sign. And then I felt a bit of a twinge. And I will say that for the past year, I would say maybe even a little bit longer, um, just like post partum my periods have become a lot more uh, intense like my symptoms have been more intense my ovulation symptoms have been super intense so like I'm always aware of when I'm ovulating and I really like trust my body in that way which is why I really thought this this go around I was pregnant because I was experiencing so many symptoms I wrote 5 DPO no congestion got to um, the boys's gym class feeling a little nauseous at night around 7 30 feeling twinges and cramps 6 DPO woke up bloated and gassy morning CM smells a little weird that's TMI sorry at 12 16 little twinges past two days notice little to no CM uh, today noticing more boobs feel sore nipples feel sensitive strong sense of smell question mark first day really feeling pregnant haven't felt pregnant up until this point have you haven't felt hopeful um, until this point so 6 dpo still super early in case you're like new to tracking your cycle um it all depends on how long your cycle is but it, sometimes it can take anywhere between seven to ten days for your fertilized egg to even implant into your uterus and before the egg implants into your uterus you are not experiencing pregnancy symptoms because there's no hcg being produced in your body right however that will that will not stop that at least did not stop me from experiencing pregnancy symptoms um at 60 p although i was like okay well now this is this is about the time when um and a little embryo would have implanted into my uterus so it, it would make sense now for me to be experiencing these symptoms and that's when i started to feel really excited seven dpo weird dreams the past couple of nights i i guess vivid is what i wrote last night's dream centering around water in the ocean very emotionally clear and strong dreams eight dpo definitely had full period cramps during the night woke up at one point cradling my stomach 6.22 a.m. Some more uncomfortable period like cramps. Feeling emotional this morning. 
Um, I wrote, took, um, took my parents' dog for a walk and leash brushed up against my chest and like it felt very sensitive. Cramps in the afternoon, so, so crampy. 2.45 to 4, I wrote cramps, bloated uterus, thirsty, uh, boobs super tender. And then I wrote 6.34 p.m. starting to feel a little bit nauseous. So that was a lot of, a lot of symptoms, <laughs> ATPO. Um, for me, my, my cycles are usually anywhere from 25 to 28 days in length. And all the other times that I've gotten pregnant, I've had positive tests, a very light positive test quite early, seven ATPO. Um, not for sure either a positive test or negative test at 10 dpo so 9 dpo didn't feel anything in the morning feeling so pregnant with cramps in the afternoon 10 dpo when i took the pregnancy test negative pregnancy test in the am but nipples still sensitive irritable and light cramping so i took a few pregnancy tests but after 10 dpo um i knew i wasn't pregnant 11 dpo wasn't pregnant 12 dpo wasn't pregnant and then my period came shortly thereafter so those are a lot of symptoms to experience when you are not pregnant and after this month i felt really discouraged because i felt like and i'm sure most women do that i was making all of that up that what what the heck why was i experiencing all of those symptoms if i wasn't pregnant I don't know have the answers to that. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a fertility specialist. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't know why I was experiencing all those symptoms, but I was did not end up getting a pregnancy test. So now let's shift gears to the month that I did end up conceiving and what those symptoms were. Going into this month, I was feeling a little bit discouraged and I was feeling like I don't want to be making up symptoms that aren't actually there so like let me be a little more disconcerting discerning let me be a little more discerning of like what i'm feeling and make sure that like i don't know i'm not over embellishing things that i'm experiencing my body so 5 dpo we were cramping in the am question mark all day right ovary kind of hurting 6 to 7 dpo at 4 30 p.m I wrote stiff uterus 7 to 8 dpo i wrote faint positive okay so super early like i mentioned i get my positives super early because my cycle is quite short and that was when i got my positive tests and i wrote irritable very little cm um last night vivid dreams but always have vivid dreams like i guess i had been having vivid dreams up to that point so before seven or eight tpo i was not i wrote you know like five dpo cramping in the am question mark um, then I had put a little note at the top writing, thinking back to the beginning of the week, I think Monday I could smell the pine of the greens when I picked up Hugo from school. So because I had, was trying to be a little more disconcerting, disconcerting, dis, discerning, discerning, <laughs> sorry, I cannot get that word right. Um, because I was trying to be a little more discerning with the symptoms that I was experiencing, I was really feeling like I wasn't experiencing much, if any. And again, like it's super early, 5 DPO, 6 DPO. 7 dpo super early but that's when i got my my faint positive so 8 to 9 dpo i wrote have that need to drink dry mouth feeling all morning have to pee every 20 minutes boobs nipples super sensitive still thirsty all the time um and i was testing every day and you can go watch that pregnancy progression test line video um because i was taking tests every day and the line was getting darker which was great 9 10 dpo vivid dream having a c-section again but it wasn't scary got positive digital tests with my first morning urine out of breath thirsty dry mouth cramping pelvic ligaments uncomfortable 8 30 a.m feeling pretty nauseous afternoon feel better did a light workout 10 to 11 dpo i wrote nauseous in the a.m uterus feels very pregnant having a hard time sleeping on my back 11 12 dpo first morning nausea 12 13 dpo i wrote boobs are definitely fuller very emotional nauseous in the a.m trying to eat consistently um, and then 13 to 14 DPO, I wrote nauseous in the morning, bloated by the end of the day, definitely look pregnant, talked, and noticed a little belly. So there you go. Um, so I think when comparing my two-week weight symptoms, comparing, and like it's it was barely a two-week weight, technically, the when I found out I was pregnant because I got a positive test at 7 DPO. So it was like more like a one-week, but I still recorded my two-week weight, two-week weight, my two-week symptoms. Um, when comparing them, I definitely experienced 
so many more symptoms when I was not pregnant versus when I was which I think is like the main takeaway from this video and something that I hope is really encouraging if you're watching this that like if you're in your two-week wait and you are not experiencing a lot of symptoms if you're not experiencing like sensitive bo boobs or you're not experiencing vivid dreams that that's okay that that doesn't mean that you're not pregnant um, everyone's body responds differently and like you've seen like I was not pregnant the month before that I was um, notating how I was feeling and I had a million symptoms and I was not pregnant um, and then when I was pregnant I had some symptoms but it wasn't quite as extensive as the month prior so anyway I hope you guys found that helpful if you have any specific questions definitely know, definitely let me know in the comments below don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next one bye guys